Hello, hello. All right. Oh, my incorrect camera is working. I like plug in the right camera and then it's like, nope, wrong camera. Okay, cool. Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can hear me because the incorrect camera is on, which means I don't know which microphone is picking up my sound. So just let me know if you guys can hear me before we begin. That's always fun. <laughs> Welcome to this live stream. Full moon Capricorn. There's so much energy though happening right now. So this is an energy report. It's different than, um, okay. Yes, can hear me, perfect. It's different than an astrological report. In an astrological report, you're go you're looking at transitions, you're looking at planets, you're looking at degrees, you're looking at the interactions of these planets. In an energy report, we're really looking at the entire energy as it pertains to humanity and what would be helpful for you to know right now in the transition that we're in. I do these on new moons and full moons because those are very charged energies for me personally. I tend to have a heightened sensitivity as well as heightened channeling during that time. So I always pair them with that. If this is your first time listening to one of my energy reports, welcome. So the energies have sort of been ramping up, ramping up, ramping up for a while now. And there's been a lot of contention and a lot of chaos and upheaval. That's not necessarily going away. However, before I get into what the cards want me to say, and before I show you the cards, I want to talk about what I have been experiencing personally as far as feeling out of body a lot. I'm having a lot of experiences of feeling outside of my body, like I see my body interacting in the world and doing something, walking around, going here. But I feel that I, the thing that I know as myself, the I am, is hovering somewhere separated from the body. So I'm not necessarily above it. I'm not necessarily totally outside of it, but I'm not 100% in sync with her. That's been happening a lot. So this sort of like energy body outside of the physical body and not tracking the same way. That's been happening. The second thing that's been happening is um, dimension like dimension traveling unintentionally. So I mentioned online the other day, I made a status on Facebook that I took a nap on July 4th. And during the nap, I was falling through folds of time, what felt like folds of dimension, time, different planes of reality. Um, and then I was hearing some audible, uh, like tuning happening in my ears. Uh, and then I just woke up. You know, it was a very short nap, but it was like an immediate, I was in a different place being tuned, things were happening. Um, since then, today's the day after the fourth, I have a splitting headache. I feel physically achy. I know that I'm nothing is wrong with me. I'm not sick, but I feel physical discomfort. And so I am putting together that whatever happened to me yesterday during that sleep time, altered some part of my physical body, my gene code, the DNA, which is being upgraded right now. And it's happening for a lot of people. It's almost like they experience like a mini death. Um, and then they come back online. And so I'm, I'm in the middle of that as we speak, like I took a leave for the headache and it's still there. It's not even touching the headache. Okay. And usually it takes it immediately away. So this is how I know that, what I'm experiencing is not a physical experience. It's an energetic experience. So I'm going to seeing some people ask questions on the Patreon. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on there answering you guys. Alien interaction. Yes. So I think that's what's happening. Someone mentioned alien interaction. I'm, as I am channeling more, which has been occurring again, a more heightened state, because I believe that those of us who are channels and those of us who have been doing this work for any period of time that are star seeds that are here to serve on the planet for the now time, we are being almost upgraded, like pushed forward to do more with that ability. 
but there's only so much our physical bodies can tolerate as far as like frequency and energy. So if we are at a cap energetically where we can't hold a certain frequency or we can't translate a certain frequency, we will have to change physically so that we can hold the frequency in our bodies and actually translate the work. So I suspect, yes, that that's exactly what happened. And today I'm sort of like hung over from that attunement. Um, and it's been all day long. I've had to lay down, sleep, <laughs> Um, in bursts, like I'll sleep and then I'll get up and I'll do like one task and then I'm exhausted. And I have to go lay down again. And that's been my, my every day. So if you're experiencing extreme bouts of exhaustion or weird, like you're sleeping and you're falling through these dimensional folds, or maybe you're having crazy dreams right now, they're very interactive. They're very energetic. All of that is completely normal part and parcel with what we're living right now. Okay. So Food is the other thing that has been coming up um, for me. So changing things that I eat. I already took out meat out of my diet, which was something that I was called to do last October. And I did that. Um, and since then, it's been like fine tuning even more so eating way less. Now it's not so much what I'm taking out. It's like volumes of food. I'm being called to ingest way less food. So my body is not as dense and I can do uh, more higher frequency things um, because I don't, I'm not processing the density. Because when you eat a lot of food and you're heavy in your body, digestion takes up a lot of vital energy. And so the less food that you're eating, the less energy you're actually using. And so I'm feeling called to really reduce, maybe have like two meals in my day and call that a day. Um, so if you're also having weird food things, that's also happening to me. Okay, so... Let's drop in to, first of all, I channeled a message, which I shared on Instagram and on Facebook from the Galactic Council. And the Galactic Council is a community. It's a board of star beings. They are, it's almost, I call them a board because the one vision I really had of sitting at a round table, and it wasn't even a round table, it was a long elongated table sitting with them um, I was the 13th member of that table and it looked like a conference table. If you can imagine a long rectangular conference table at the, at one end of the table was this beautifully decorated star being who was female. Um, and as I approached the table to have a seat with them, she placed this headpiece on me. It was a very beautiful headpiece, very ornate. Um, and then she asked me to have a seat at the other end of the table. And at that point I realized, okay, this is the council that I have been communicating with and talking to, and now they wanna have a meeting with me. And I was the 13th member of that council. There was exactly 13 seats at the table. And what's interesting about that is I have a long standing affection for that number. It's a, for me, it's a very magical number. And so when I had that vision that was nowhere near in my mind's eye, but that was what I saw. So. Since since about my son is now almost five. So since he was about two, right before we moved into our first home, I during the Lionsgate eclipse, I had an awakening several years ago. And then at that point, I started communicating, channeling galactic messages, which I wasn't doing prior to that. And one of the messages that they dropped in, which has then been affirmed by listening to other people who channel the collectives like the Pleiadian, the Arcturians, et cetera, is that we have to be very mindful of the frequency that we're using to emote right now. Emotion is energy in motion. And as we are emoting, we are creating. And this has always been true. This has always been true. This is the premise of the law of attraction. This is the premise of manifestation, which by the way, if you don't watch my Friday weekly shows called Fireside Fridays, which is a more political current event with a metaphysical angle in it. In that show, I talked about how the CIA recently declassified documents. Basically, in, in very specific terms, saying that concepts like the law of attraction and the use of consciousness for creation, astral projection, time travel, energy bodies and energy holograms were all real. And that in fact, organizations like the CIA have been using this knowledge 
for a long time, which those of us who are in the quote unquote conspiracy community knew that because we knew about projects like MK Ultra and we knew about Project Mockingbird and we knew how they were studying the human psyche and how to influence the psyche. Um, and we know that a lot of what they use is not just a physical technique, it's energetic as well. So they have recently declassified those documents and um, it's mind blowing. It's absolutely mind blowing. But all of that to say is that the law of attraction manifestation has always been true. It has always been true that the way that we create in the third dimensional world was through energy and motion or emoting. It's not the thought that creates. It's the thought that generates the feeling. And from the feeling, you create, you generate. Okay. However, in the third dimensional reality, 3D Earth is extremely dense. So manifestation was very slow for a long time. And about maybe a year ago, six months to a year ago, I started talking about how manifestation was speeding up. And this was way before this era, you know, life post COVID is how I like to refer it because from COVID onward, we're living in a completely different world. So just to get that clear, 2020 March, a very, the beginning of an, of a new era in humanity. Okay. So prior to that, I had been talking about in 2019, how manifestation was speeding up and I was seeing that evidenced in my own life. Now, as we've shifted into 2020 and all of this has happened, what I now realize is that the reason it was speeding up was because our planet was becoming less dense. We were moving from third dimension to the lower fourth dimension, and we are slowly going up the fourth dimension into the fifth dimension, which is where we're supposed to be transitioning to as a planet. So as the planet becomes less dense, the time in which we manifest and create is becoming a lot shorter. It's a condensed period of time. So I was noticing that a year ago. Now, speed that up even more. Speed that up even more. Okay. So the message that came through from the council that I shared in these slides was be very mindful of the frequency that you are holding and how much time you spend influencing your emotions from an external angle. Meaning, how much time are you watching the news and reading these clickbait titles and giving into the panic and the terror and the division and the separation and the F this and the that and that and all the energy you're giving to those things and they are influencing your internal reality, generating panic, generating feelings of division, generating feel feelings of anger or hostility. That is then turning over in your physical life and generating more of that for you at like lightning speed. It's almost like an energetic boomerang that's just whipping around and coming back around with that. Okay. So be mindful of that. Okay. They were so insistent that I remind you now more than ever that this matters. And now I understand why it matters that we become good stewards of our frequency and our emotions because that is how we are bringing in the new earth so we need the we need a tipping scale of humans on the planet in the collective to be generating feelings of an um, auspicious future for the planet so that we can complete this journey that is our destiny to complete um and that's going to be a very good segue into the cards and what's interesting is I was listening to a, a roundtable discussion. Okay, so lots of you are experiencing the, the whole hunger thing, like limited hunger. Yes, so when all this new stuff started happening, especially in the beginning of COVID, I think it was tempting for those of us who wanted to find the truth and wanted to figure out to spend a lot of time in that place. But what I have learned, I report on this stuff every single week. I have a Friday show and I report on current events from, a, from an alternate news angle. And I spend time in that to inform myself. I look for truths and things that piece together a larger narrative so that I can present that every week. And then I'm out and I'm back in my own field and I'm doing my own work. I'm in my business, I'm helping my fitness clients, I'm helping my team, I'm in the things that I love and enjoy, and I'm hands off of that. And that's how they recommend that we work with this information. 
So I was a, attending another roundtable discussion about the now time and something that one of the um, astrologers mentioned was how she was pulling cards and she pulled all of these major arcana cards. And she's like, I've never pulled so many major arcana cards for a time period. Um, and it's so funny because when I did the spread, I had like, I have six, five. Okay. That's a lot in one reading. Usually it's like two and then minor cards to like influence the major kind of cards. And I was like, oh, so she was right because I'm getting a very similar energy. So the, the reason major kind of cards are such a big deal is because they're template cards. So they really set a tone for the energy, the time period that we're in or the situation that I'm talking to a person about. So let's start with these two. The wisdom card, also number five, card of change. And the wise woman of wonderland inverted, which is about integrity and compromise. Okay. So the wisdom card is also about teachers. And this came up actually a few, like a month ago, and I did not fully talk about it in a previous reading, but I'm going to talk about it now. Something that's becoming incredibly apparent amongst the community of spiritual teachers, and there are many, and there are many good ones, and there are many that have not done their homework. And that's becoming increasingly apparent right now. So my words of advice are going to be, be wary of teachers who claim to be spiritual teachers, who claim to be enlightened or, you know, have large audiences and and I've seen I've seen them huge audiences huge followings people totally love them and trust them and the message coming out of their mouth is extremely third dimensional and divisive and they're totally playing into the narratives of division and they're compromising their personal integrity they're compromising their spiritual integrity to go along with a rhetoric that is popular, mob-like, and has a lot of energy behind it. Because they don't want to look a certain way. So because they don't want to look or be canceled or be shunned from certain communities... They are participating in a rhetoric that is not authentic for where they are in their spiritual evolution. In other words, they have moved beyond certain dialogues because they've integrated them. They've moved beyond that. And so what they're teaching is in a certain pattern of frequency. But they're over here talking about this because they're afraid. They're afraid of being called out or canceled or seen as less than um, whatever, important or valued, okay? I'm seeing that all over, all over, all over. And I just want to bring attention to this because this whole idea of like false prophets and, and you cannot come to unity divided. You cannot come to unity from division. You get to unity practicing unity. That's like preparing for peace with war. Those are two completely different energy fields. They're not compatible. So either you're preparing for peace or you're preparing for war in your frequency and your actions. Either you're preparing for unity or you are creating division. This is, this is what you're feeding with your frequency, right? You can't get here from over here. It has to be here, and then you can do this. So be mindful of that. And if you are one of those people and you are a spiritual leader in your community, be very sure to maintain and be in your integrity when you're teaching and you're communicating things that you consider to be important, Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a human experience. and Everybody is here experiencing their human experience to the best that they are able to do. But be very wary of not continuing to drive a wedge 
when what you're trying to do is unite, right? To bring, to maximize the light and put away the darkness that has been in the background of this planet for a long time, okay? Just, that came up again. So I was like, this is important. Let's talk about it again. All right. Then we got a set of four cards in this sort of cross-like, it was like a Celtic cross shape. Let's see if I can hold up the shape. It was formulated like this for the collective. And these were all really beautiful and really exciting cards. So let's go through them one by one. Okay, so we have New Beginnings, which is one of my favorite, favorite cards. Accelerated Motion. Balance and passion ignited. So good. You notice how many spiritual cards are in here? This purple frame. So good. Even this major arcana card is very spiritually based. So what are we looking at? Exactly what we've been talking about. The earth is entering a cycle of new beginnings. A new earth is literally occurring as we are existing. And manifestation and creation is an accelerated motion. This is this card right here. If you want a card for to define the general theme of right now is accelerated motion. We are just skyrocketing in creation and, and in contrast as well. So feedback, right? There's, there's an action done and then there's an immediate feedback. And then there's this done and there's immediate feedback. So the contrast that we're experiencing is also an accelerated motion. Just seems like it's one thing after the next, after the next, because it is. Because this is the nature of, if you look at the planetary alignments and you're really into astrology and you want to geek out over that, you will see that we are we are in a formation that we haven't seen in a long time planetarily. And the last time we saw it, there was a lot of contention and a lot of revolting. So to be expected. And this card, balance, I'm going to look at for a hot second. So... Balance is a very difficult concept because do we ever really experience balance in our day-to-day -day life? No, it's more like harmony. We're more always aiming for harmony where everything is not happening in a balanced way, but it feels good to us in any given moment. And when our attention shifts, we can shift into different things that are more of a priority. However, balance as a planetary concept has been something that we have been greatly out of for a long time. We have been out of balance almost since our inception as a planet, and especially with us on the planet. So what Earth is in the process of doing is really gearing herself into a place of balance, into a place of not that there isn't darkness, because darkness is a component of light. I mean, you have those that balance, that contrast, so you know what light is and you can experience it. But that it is in a balanced relationship. So that light is the predominant, it is a strong influence instead of being constantly kept at bay by these dark forces, dark, ener dark energies that are the controller energies. And right now the, the passion ignited card for me is so significant because I don't think there has ever been a time on the planet where more people have been awake, where more people have had this passion for freedom, for, um, for their earth, you know, like in, in some ways it's for their country. Like I myself have a new level of patriotism for my country and a new appreciation for my country that I didn't really have as a youth. But globally, I feel like we are having that for the earth. Like we are waking up to how much we love the earth and how much we love being a part of the earth and how important it is to care for earth. Um, and so we are all being ignited almost like, you know, this, my torch is lighting that person's torch, and that person's torch, whether it's physically or on social media, and it's facilitating all of this growth exponentially at the same time, uh, in the human consciousness and human evolution. The other thing that I wanted to mention about this, because it came up in a different round table discussion that I was watching was that distance actually right now is not a detriment to us because in allowing our auric fields to be just by themselves, just without this constant contact of other people, um, 
we are actually strengthening our auric field. We are strengthening our auric field and we are becoming more attuned to us. And I thought that was so profound because I have experienced that myself, where my sensitivity for where is my energy at any given point in time is so much more heightened because I'm not constantly around people. I have purposefully removed myself from like grocery shopping as often as I did or going out to places as often as I did. And so the reduction of that noise of that energetic noise has actually changed how much I feel myself. And I'm, I'd love to hear from you who are watching live right now. If you experience that also as true. Yes. New appreciation for your country as well. So much love and gratitude. I a hundred percent feel that I feel that I feel like a new, this is a new sense of patriotism that's really grounded in in freedom, in love of freedom. And and the, and again, it's almost like not just patriotism to like a country, but it's like this 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 love for our earth. It's it's a very unique experience, but I feel it in mass. Um the final four cards that came out were transformation, which came out last time, destiny emotional loss, and the base chakra. So the transformation and destiny cards speak for themselves. Um, we are smack in the middle of walking. For sure, I, I'll bring the attention to the U.S. because the U.S. right now is setting the tone for the globe. And energetically, they're doing that. I'm not the only psychic who believes that. Um, I follow several who have received the same message. And that being said, because the U the US is really unique in how she was formed, meaning constitution, declaration of independence, the story of her formation is very unique. The standards by which she's run are very unique um, in the formation of a nation. She's also very young as a nation comparatively. And she's also extremely different because she is comprised, she's a first world country comprised of an amalgamation of people, different people, right? She is a melting pot, literally. And so the patriotism that comes from that nation is a patriotism to the nation, not a, not a patriotism to an ethnic heritage, right? as you would see in like a European nation, perhaps like in the older European nation, which was more uniform in um, ethnicity, in lineage, which was more singularly uniformed. As we stand now, I mean, we are so incredibly diverse and in the amount of languages spoken in our nation and the amount of spiritual religious practices. I mean, it's such a diverse nation. And what I see happening is a patriotism that's rooted in appreciation for possibility within the nation and not rooted in, um, not because we're born there even necessarily. That's what's really mind blowing that I'm seeing because patriotism as we believe it to be, or as that we've been educated to be, is often like, oh, I'm from this country and I have this sense of like connection to the country because I was born in that country and I was, you know, brought up in that country. But this is different. This energy of patriotism is like to an ideal. It's patriotism to an ideal, to a to a value system, to a to a dream, really. That's, that's what the patriotism is too. So anybody can be a part of that, whether or not they were born there, if they just emigrated there, lived there, or anybody can feel that. So that's what I see happening that's very unique and different. And I'm, I'm thrilled to see that energy shifting. Um, and I'm excited to see how that's going to play out in the future, not just of this country, but of other countries, where we begin to have a patriotism that's tied to ideals and values um, and not to just because this is the land that I'm from or because this is my flag or because this is, you know, that to me is very third dimensional, which is 
Whereas having this sense of loyalty to a value system or, or an ideology feels very four or five D in the way that we have like allegiance, so to speak. I also see countries uniting by allegiances, which is an interesting thing. That's not like a fully fleshed out uh, concept in my mind, but I have been receiving bits and pieces of how that's going to change over time. Uh, so this to me is a very, the destiny card is extremely profound for this moment because I see how the U.S. is paving a way and getting this right means setting a precedent for other developed nations and onward. And um, the timeline still looks like it is getting it right, okay? There's been some cracks, but the timeline still looks like we are getting it right. And it will be how we want it to be, majority of us, which is new earth, 5D, cooperation, compassion, uh, new form of government that allows for that and um, deeply cares for its people, deeply serves its people and its citizenry. And then the root chakra, which to me is again, like, Something about the fact that it's, it's been July 4th and talking about the birth of this nation and the root chakra being one of the earliest chakras that we develop, the base chakra, there's this incredible transformation happening right in that, that root of this nation, the U.S., which is where, I'm, where I am right now, happening at the root, but also happening at the root of all of us at the same time. So one of you mentioned having a spontaneous Kundalini experience, one of the members of the Patreon community, and I expect to see much more of that happening where you have this energy rise up from the base of your spine up through your body and it just happens overnight and it's like an activation of energy through the body. That's happening to the earth, that's happening to our systems, our governmental systems, that's happening to people, it's happening on every level, this Kundalini activation right? And in within the systems and within the countries and within the earth. And so activation is happening and it's spreading so far and wide. And where, where I really became so aware of this was I was watching this uh, Mount Rushmore, the president spoke at Mount Rushmore for July 4th and he gave the speech and I was in the comments. I, the speech was plain, but I was more reading the comments underneath of the speech and people from all over the world, okay? Africa, Scotland, England, Australia, New Zealand, India, like Singapore, all over were commenting on this speech, expressing gratitude for the message he was saying, saying they wish they had similar leadership in their countries, which is really eye-opening because so many people in our own country just dis dislike him tremendously, right? So it's so eye-opening to see from the outside how other people follow our news, our rituals, our Independence Day so closely. It has significance for them and they're not even Americans. I found that fascinating. And this is when I realized that that download that I have received and other psychics have received that America is first and leading the way for this, this transition of power is so true because all eyes are on us everywhere. And so this now more than ever, I feel like if you're in America, if this where you reside, if this is where your energy field is, you need to be pouring into casting the new earth vision like every night. When you go to bed, get into the meditation, listen to a good meditation. I shared an amazing galactic meditation on Patreon. It was so good. I feel like doing that every single night. Do it every night. Ground yourself in that frequency. Do not let up on that because this, this is our, we incarnated here. We incarnated to end up in this country for a reason. We star seeds that are here are anchoring this nation for the rest of the world. We are setting a trend energetically that is going to dictate how the rest of the world follows and how the earth shifts. So let's do that work and let's not let up on that work. So important.
All right, I'm gonna just check in and see if I have any questions from my members. Any questions, you guys watching live? Anything you're experiencing that you want clarity on yourself? Pop me a line. This is a big energy time, friends. This is a time <laughs> to really do your work, do your homework. I like to call it. I don't see any questions yet. It's also a delay on Patreon to YouTube. So as I develop more of this concept of the shifts in uh, countries and how countries are not formed, but how they are run and as I channel more of that, I'll um, I'll share more of it in bits and pieces. But right now, I haven't been given like a clear, this is where we're going, only that uh, we are setting the tone for that and that there will be changes soon coming. Um, I do see an opening up of information. I do see a lot of disclosure coming in the next couple of years. Um, and the disclosure, so the emotional loss card, which is a card that I did not really talk about but i think it goes without saying that many people are in that place right now and there's there's going to be more of that because i think as the matrix fragments the disillusionment is going to be very intense for a lot of people to to handle so my other message for those of you that are you know awake and seeing what's happening is to be very considerate of those that aren't and that are about to be quote unquote red pilled in a very intense way because, you know, I see a lot of times online people use words like sheep or sheeple or whatever. And I get where you're coming from when you use that word, but it's also a derogatory term. And it also doesn't take into account that the people who haven't reached that frequency yet to activate and wake up, they don't necessarily know that, you know, and it might not even be that they don't want to activate and wake up and see beyond the grid. They're just not seeing that yet right? They're not, that's not where their frequency is. So as a star seed on this planet, as someone who is a light bringer and a light bearer, remember to hold the torch for them too. And to do that in a compassionate manner, because they are just living their experience. They did incarnate here for a reason. They chose to come here and be here, but they don't necessarily maybe remember as much as some of us do, or they haven't had that moment yet where pieces clicked for them and they were able to see more of the picture. So I just felt like sharing that because I don't use those terms and I don't like to use those terms because I do experience them as being um, derogatory. And, you know, everybody's on the planet doing the best they can with what they have. And sometimes that's very limited amount of information. Oh, awesome. Kobe found our way to YouTube. <laughs> Great. Any questions, please let me know before we wrap up. And again, um, this audio stream will be available on YouTube and on the podcast without a video format. And if you'd like to join us on video and also be able to ask questions and have channeling done for you, then come on into our Patreon community. You are more than welcome. If you have any questions, drop them in there. And uh, otherwise, we can wrap up. Good session. Excellent. So Kobe said she wanted to note that all the cards pulled felt very on point from a personal perspective as well. Um, and isn't that so interesting? So when I pull, I always pull for collective. I'm always like, okay, let me, let me give the collective message. And, and it doesn't, it like never fails that at least one person who's watching that live is like, oh my gosh, that's like, could have been just for my own life, your spread. Um, and it'll be that way for many who watch this or listen to this because we are all connected. We are all part of the one. That's the beauty of being a human being on this planet right now. So good.
so, so good. So if you're listening, let me know, have you had any of these experiences of time warps or appetite changes? Or are you currently in the middle of waking up and discovering, oh my gosh, there's so much I didn't know that I wish I did know. Um, drop me a comment and let me know where you are right now in your specific uh, development of the ascension process. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and stay tuned because we do these every full moon, new moon. So the next new moon will be coming on live again, doing another energy report um, and answer questions for all the members who are live. All right, darlings, have an amazing one. As always, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Love you so much.